Hey everyone, I'm Brandon with A2Z Productions and today we're going to talk about FaceTime and how it basically just replaced Zoom. WWDC just dropped yesterday and with all the things that they announced, FaceTime was probably the biggest one that I'm excited about. What they talked about was not only the ability to do screen shares and watch videos with your friends, but it was FaceTime links, all right? This is what I got excited about because this is what Zoom has always had over FaceTime, okay? The ability to pre-schedule calls, get it on people's calendars, right? And then cross-platform communication. FaceTime links just replaced all of those features, okay? I can go through iCal, through messages, through all these ways to communicate, you know, emails, all the ways to get links to people, but then Windows users, Android users, they can all join my FaceTime call now. So this just completely replaced Zoom for all of our internal purposes. We already have been having our internal team calls via FaceTime. It just is easier because we all have iOS devices. Now when we onboard some Windows users and things like that, we don't have to change anything. So that's great there. The audio, right? What they were able to do with audio is nothing new. Zoom has been doing this for a while, but because Apple is doing it, and as usual, they're late to the game, they will probably do it better than anyone else. So they have two new audio features in FaceTime. It is uh, spatial audio, all right, and then they're kind of focused. Brian, what are the names for those guys? So voice isolation is just isolating your voice dropping out background noise, and then wide spectrum is not doing any effects, I think, like if you were doing music or something like that. Because Apple is doing the spatial audio and the voice isolation audio, uh, I'm very excited for our production uses, which I'll get into later, but getting clean, natural sound, as well as their uh, being able, if you're listening on AirPods, it becomes more natural. If you're just you and doing FaceTime everyday uses, it's just gonna sound better. Simple as that, all right? And when I saw this graphic here, which was the widescreen horizontal FaceTime, I got excited because maybe they'll actually do 1920 by 1080, which is a full screen Zoom, uh, sorry, FaceTime call, right? I'm so used to doing Zoom all the time. They'll do a full screen FaceTime call and maybe we even get clean feeds. Again, production uses, that'll be great. No distractions on the screen, no pop-ups, no little things in the corners. That'd yeah, be and, awesome. And they actually do portrait mode through FaceTime as well now. Right, so those little hacks you were getting with the green screen and the blurred background or the way Zoom could like isolate and cut you out from your non-green screen, you can do those on FaceTime now. So they'll give you that blurred background effect that you usually need a depth of field lens and things like that. You can do it with the software on any of your iOS devices. Probably not something they'll support for your Windows and Android users because it's going to be all through the web browser. We use Zoom drones here and I'd be excited if they allowed FaceTime to pin people, which is a Zoom reference, but pinning someone basically just means full screening one specific person, which then allows us to bring individual people into our switcher and we can create our looks for our shows and events. Uh, for everyday users, that'd be great. So if you just had a bunch of people on the call but you were focused on one person, besides that person just getting slightly bigger in your image, actually full screening them would be a huge help. End-to-end -end encryption is something that pretty much all the platforms have had. Great to know that we can do these through a web browser as well. And that also means it's a lot harder for random Joe Schmoes to hop into your call and interrupt things. Okay, the other thing I was really psyched about for Apple to talk about was universal control. Okay, they've had things like AirPlay, they've had the ability to have an iPad be a second display and things like that, but universal control tops all of them. Because not only does it allow you to just simply place your iPad next to your computer and then it'll like detect it and you can drag your mouse across and drag and drop things and your keyboard will work on your iPad. It's awesome. But 
what it changes is the way we have to think about workflows now. Because imagine you're a video editor, right? And you have your laptop, your video editing, you happen to have an iPad or even some other computers. What you can do is you can place them next to each other. Universal control will detect that these things are next to each other. Not only do you get the ability to very easily use your mouse and keyboard across all of them for fast workflows, but now you can think about making something on the iPad and simply drag and dropping it right on to your, whether you're using Final Cut or some other editing software, you can really speed things up by just moving files between devices this way and not having to do maybe an airdrop, not having to email yourself files. You're in business and you got Excel documents, Microsoft Word, FaceTimes. You could be FaceTiming someone on your iPad working on your laptop and then drag and drop the document into messages so they get it. Or screen share from your laptop while on face. Possibilities are endless. Universal control connects all the devices and for our production uses, I see this coming in handy through let's say our ATEM softwares. When we're controlling switchers, I could have an app like MixFX open on the iPad. I could have the same app opened on my computer. I could be controlling both of them at the same time. Just a lot of possibilities. We're doing a whole nother video on that later, so stay tuned for that. Microsoft Teams, Apple, they've all been putting the pressure on Zoom, okay? Microsoft Teams has webinar features, if you didn't know, okay? It's something they released weeks, maybe a month ago. And Microsoft Teams has always had their live event platform so that's really cool. And so Zoom, the pressure is now on you. Apple has upped their game with FaceTime. Microsoft Teams is up in their game with Webinar and all their other features they've been adding. So Zoom, if I were you, here's what I would do. I would be building this platform that I've wanted for forever now that I still think is coming, but maybe you need to get even on it faster, which is the ability for third-party users companies like ours and other people to be able to control and manipulate the image of what the meeting or the webinar or the stream looks like right inside your Zoom application, okay? You want an example of how this is done well? Restream. Restream has been doing this for a couple months now. The ability to do multiple people talking to each other, bring in overlays like comments and such, Determine what you want the stream to look like with boxes on the sides, a screen share, moving boxes around, all of those things. So Zoom, if you want to really up your game and, and make people pay attention to you and have companies and, and other people say we should use Zoom over other platforms, you might need to step on the gas on this one because this ability to manipulate the image, bring in overlays, do lower thirds. We get clients asking us all the time for backgrounds, video playback, lower thirds, things like that. If Zoom could provide these solutions, we might not even need all of our switchers for these virtual things that we're doing. Hybrid events are coming and people want to make their live stream look good for their hybrid event while still having an in-person show. We use the physical switchers for the in-person show and we could use something like Zoom webinars or Zoom live streaming because you can already go to all these platforms in Zoom. We might use Zoom by itself to run the whole virtual component. Only if they could provide what something like Restream can do for us. Comments, chat, Zoom. You need to be able to pull the chat question up on the screen especially in your webinars. Every, every other platform can do this. Why not Zoom? So that's what I have to say about Zoom. Is it dead? No. Is it dead for everyday use? For our company it is. We'll only be using Zoom for actu our actual production uses, but for everyday work, we'll just be using FaceTime. It just makes more sense for us. Apple's killing it with their ecosystem and every other app should be on watch because, well, if you think that Apple might replace you, they probably will in the future.
That's it. I'm Brandon from A to Z Productions. Check out all the new FaceTime stuff with the new Mac OS. It's awesome. I was freaking out yesterday watching the thing, and I just wanted to share my thoughts. Thanks, and have a good one.